What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I wanna actually show you the new way of animating keyframes. This is actually very, very cool and I would love to show you this, how this works. So what I've did is I just pulled up a photo of a Audi RS6 right here with a text file on top. So let's say that we want to make this text move all the way across the screen. You can do that very, very easily. I'm just gonna show you that in just a second, but this works for everything. This is just a text file just to show you, but if you have an overlay of a lower third or something else like that, you can actually apply this effect on any track and it will all do it for you. So what we have here is the photo. We're going to place the file on top of it on a separate track that we want to animate. Then we're going to click on the video effects tab and then we're going to take the picture in picture and we're going to drag that onto the track. We're going to click on this icon right here because it's actually a little bit easier to see all the keyframes in this line between those two clips. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to go to the very beginning and the text is right here. Now what we're going to do is in this location option, we're going to hit that and then we're going to click on this keyframe icon. And then we're going to make sure that sync cursor is checked. Well, sometimes you want to uncheck it if you want to, you know, optimize some stuff. But I just find this a little bit more handy and more efficient when this one is turned on. So the text right here is sitting right here. So let's say that we're going to make it a little bit bigger and we're going to have it start on the bottom left. We're going to position it right there. And as you can tell, underneath the marker, a keyframe has been created. So watch what happens if I play back and I drag this one around across the whole preview screen. As you can tell, it's making keyframes in real time following my actual movement. So if you pause it, as you can tell, this is the movement for my cursor that I just did. And it's making all the keyframes one by one. And you can use this in many different applications and ways. But there are tons of different effects that you can also animate in keyframe, which is, for example, the bump map. So when we take bump map right here on the top left, we will drag it on top of the track right here. You can tell that the effect immediately takes effect. So if I uncheck and check it, this is, of course, the difference. But you can start from complete scratch and you can make this effect obviously fade in. If you pay attention to the right of every single fader, there is an animate button so if we're going to click on the intensity one right here it will show us the keyframe menu so if we hit sync cursor right here if you make sure that's highlighted as you can tell the cursor is going to follow along on the timeline so it's really cool that you can decide where to exactly have the effect start or end so if we're going to have it a couple seconds into the clip if we bring up the intensity as you can tell as soon as i touch the fader it will create a keyframe right there and the preview window will change so then what we're going to do is we're going to drag the fader up a little bit and then we're going to drag the marker to the right and then we're going to drag down the shininess and the bump height as well so as you can tell, this is the difference that we created. So just to show you guys, this is what it looks like if we hit playback. It actually fades in and it will be animated across the whole picture, as you can tell. But that works for everything, guys. If I uncheck the bump map for a second and if I hit the cookie cutter right here and if I drag it onto the clip, this is pretty much how you can animate certain highlights of a clip. So let's go ahead and make sure that all the keyframes we just created are deleted. So if we start from complete scratch, as you can tell, this is the entire shot of the circle. And if we grab the middle point right here on the preview, we can pretty much drag it across the whole shot. So let's say that you want to highlight, let's say this is an ad for the actual car. It's really cool that you can just animate it just like I showed you before. So if you want to start on the top left and then we can drag the keyframe into the timeline just a little bit further. Then we're going to take the position right here and we're going to drag it into the center. You can change the border. You can completely customize it, of course, to make it smaller and bigger. So if you make it a little bit smaller, that's going to happen when we start playing the clip. And then you can also change the border size by animating it by clicking on this icon. So then if we create a keyframe right here, and then we move up a little bit further and we make the border, for example, completely gone. This is how you can fade out with a circle, for example. Kind of reminds me of the Mr. Bean intro. <laughs> so that's pretty much how you can animate cookie cutter effects. You can animate every single effect right here with the border. We have all the keyframe icons next to each fader. It's very, very cool and simple. And lastly, very, very important. Let's say they created this uh, preset, let's say with four or five different effects. I only have two now, the bump map and the cookie cutter. If you want to apply this to a different effect and you don't want to do the animating and the keyframes all over again and save a lot of time, you can go ahead and save this as an actual preset. So in order to do that, you want to click right here on save plugin chain as a filter package. Then we can give this a name, for example, animate it circle and then it's going to tell you the plugin chain contains animation data 
So we're going to hit yes. And then if we drag in a brand new clip, we can apply that straight onto the new one. So how that works, it's super, super easy. Right here, we have the effects button on your brand new clip. That will open up the plugin chooser. And on the left right here, you would click on filter packages. And then you want to find the preset that you just saved. So we call this animated circle. So in this list, as you can tell right here, it says animated circle. If we double click on that and then if we hit OK, as you can tell, it will be applied straight onto the clip. And that's how you can save and import all of those effects, saving you a lot of time not having to make this from scratch every single time. I just wanted to throw that in there. You can zoom in and then you can tell all the different keyframes right here. You can optimize them. You can space them out a little bit if needed. But if you need to do the motion all over again, you just press Control Z. That's going to undo all the keyframing. So let's do that again. So let's make it start on the top left. And then while it's playing back, I'm going to take my cursor or my computer. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to drag this around manually. And then you will see that all the keyframes are starting to be created right here in the middle. If I pause, as you can tell, there is pauses between the keyframe and I can go around as long as I want. As you can tell, it's very, very cool. It's tracking your actual motion in real time. So as you can tell, if I just pause it, because I messed up a little bit right here, but if you pay attention to this one, as you can tell, it's sliding into the screen. We're going to go back to picture in picture because I want to show you the Bezier curves as well. So we're going to click on this icon right here. That's going to open up the picture in picture menus. And then right here on the bottom, we're going to click on curves. So we can now see the actual movement on the timeline right here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier. So this is kind of like your editor where you can still go ahead and touch up keyframes if needed. If you want to have more space between all the keyframes, you can manually, as you can tell, drag and drop them right here. You can right click to change the modes like linear, smooth, fast, slow, sharp. And also we can have the locked tangents. Let's go ahead and drag a bump map effect onto the track right here. Now, this is obviously going to show the effect right here in the window. But we're going to actually do this on the timeline. So in order to make the icon show up, you want to click right here on the left. And if that doesn't show, you want to click right here and then you want to hit this one just to make sure that it's actually showing because this is not on by default. So once we've done that, we can expand this menu right here and then it will show this little lighter section on the timeline. So then what we can do is we can click on those icons and that will create all those lines in different colors. So we have all the automation envelopes that share the same color as a diamond icon. And of course, you can modify this envelope in multiple ways. For example, dragging the keyframe up and down to adjust the blend amount, which in turn controls the intensity of the bump map effect. So you can actually double click right here just to create a separate one. You can drag this one down. It's super easy how you can change those effects right here. You can drag them up and down. You can animate those and then you can kind of add in a fade in or a fade out, so to speak, to an effect instead of an actual fade out. So it's really handy how you can do this in your timeline. It's expandable it's very time efficient and then in the effects window right here you can of course also change the keyframes themselves but it's just a lot easier to work in detail on the timeline and the split tangents and as you can tell that's obviously going to make it a nice little curve instead of like pointy so this is the whole menu where you can go ahead and change it up and if you need to do some touch-ups. So you can expand this little window right here if you want to go in extreme detail. And then right here where it says set to, you can also set the values. So guys, this is how the brand new keyframe feature works. It's very, very cool. We can now go in extreme detail and adjust this on a way, way more efficient way than before. If you have any more questions about the animated keyframing, make sure to drop them in the comments down below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.